Hoffman Construction to leave downtown Portland headquarters. Hoffman Construction, massive construction company. They redid the Space Needle here in Seattle. Billion dollar annual, multi-billion dollar annual revenue company. And it built the building that they're going to be taking off from. They're going to exit their headquarters in downtown Portland. And there sounds like they might be going to the burbs. Might be going to the burbs. They're following suit, getting out of downtown because nobody wants their employees. Nobody wants to work in downtown cores anymore because so many of them have been hollowed out from the work from home. Homeless, you know, addicts population just exploded during the Rona. Haven't ever quite got that back down. Downtown Portland, just a ghost town with its hundred plus days of rioting by Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Nobody wants to be in that environment. So if they've got options and they want to go to the burbs, they can. Let's get into it. Here we go. So this is kind of one of those small little tiny micro pieces that fits the bigger picture of not only big companies like REI and Walmart and all the other companies that have left, restaurants that have left, but institutions, local institutions that aren't replaceable. This isn't a franchise. This is a massive construction company, and it's been one of the pillars of the downtown Portland for years and years and years, I think like over a hundred years. Hoffman Construction, the largest construction company in the region and long a mainstay of the downtown business community, has decided to leave its headquarters office in the Fox Tower in the heart of Portland's embattled central business district. Like how it says embattled, up until not that long ago, news articles were not saying embattled. They were saying um, up and you know, it's got plenty of upside potential. I mean, everything is there for Portland to make that turn it around and it feels like it's happening. And now you're seeing more and more of good Lord. It's just what happened to Portland. Now it's been happening for years, right? It's been happening for years, but the last few years, yeah, you talk about getting a little gray hair. This is where I get my gray hair. When I get really tan, you know, and the gray hair is white, it just shows up. And you're like, e last few years have put some gray hair on Portland from the standpoint of they weren't good for business. A lot of businesses have left. A lot of the other businesses that would support those businesses have left. Got a lot of vacant space. This is happening across the United States, but Portland especially has been hard hit. Today, we shared with our employees that we will also be moving our main office when our lease expires at Fox Tower in 2025. Dan Drinkward, the Hoffman's vice president, said Friday. Drinkward declined to say where the company is moving. He also declined to say why the company was making the move but added that Hoffman had outgrown its space at Fox Tower, where it occupies one entire floor of the building and parts of two others. With $3.98 billion in total revenue and more than 1,200 employees, that's a big company, construction company. Hoffman is far and away the largest construction company based in Oregon. It, it's also been growing. Over the last few years, Hoffman has doubled in size and added a significant amount of employees, both in our offices and job sites. Drinkward said, that growth has led us to engage in a review of all our offices and facilities. Okay, that's a company that's been in Portland forever. They don't want to crap on their way out, just, you know, trash the city and just burn bridges. They don't need to do that. They're probably going to be in the burb somewhere. But they, you know, they, they, they don't want to slash and burn on their way out and just, ah, this uh, downtown has sucked lately. Therefore, we're moving out. Can't believe all the homeless there and the drugs and can't believe what the mayor has let gone on. I mean, Antifa just running loose. Well, what's up with that? And they're not going to do that, right? They're just going to quietly say, yeah, we're, we're no longer, you know, renewing our lease. And we did some rethinking and some reimagining and, we're reimagining ourselves, you know, as a company being anywhere but um, downtown Portland. So please support us. And hey, thanks for the last hundred years in downtown. They've been specially epic, but 
Yeah, not for us anymore. Not for us. A multi-million dollar expansion of Hoffman's Northeast Portland facility is already underway. Okay. All right. So they're a little further out there with that one, right? Several Hoffman subsidiary and related companies are based at that location near Northeast Killingsworth Street and 80th Avenue, but the headquarters will not be moving there because that's a little too close to still being in town, right? Our new office will let us enjoy many of the same things we love about Fox Tower, an office our employees enjoy coming to every day. That reflects who we are and facilit facilitates our best work, Drinkward said. In addition, the new space will allow all of our employees to be together on contiguous floors and accommodate future growth. Ah, doesn't that just sound great? Doesn't that just sound like one big happy family? Now, that's the corporate speak for, okay, we're getting the whole band together. We're putting them one spot because it's easier to manage instead of having all these little bits and pieces of company floating around and got this one division needs to talk to this division. Now we can make that happen easily. We're not all spread out and broken up. Plus, we want to get the F out of Dodge, Dodge being downtown Portland. So a steady trickle of companies have left Portland in recent years, some citing safety concerns and higher costs in the core of downtown as they move to suburban, lo suburban locales. Yeah, safety concerns and higher costs. So if you're going to pay top dollar, you're not going to want to be in downtown because things don't look great there, right? And you got a lot of vacancies. So you want to go somewhere else? You want to go where a lot of employees are already? That's the burbs because that's where they live. So economists and business leaders posit that wealthy individuals may be leaving Portland too. I think one of the podcasts I did was they took over a billion dollars worth of income stream with them when a whole bunch of millionaires have decided, yeah, Portland's yeah tax basis, expense, homeless population, way they're handling things future of the way they're handling things, crime concerns, um, housing costs relative to, you know, what we've got going on. That's just not for us anymore. And so wealthy individuals are leaving Multnomah County. They're leaving this area fairly significantly, and they're taking a big income stream with them. Over similar concerns and the instant tax reductions offered in neighboring counties, among them is Wayne Drinkward, chair of Hoffman's board, who for years lived in Portland's West Hills. Real estate documents show the Drinkward Family Holdings LLC, which lists Wayne Drinkward as its agent in 2021, bought a house in ba, 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 Lake Oswego. Got relatives in Lake Oswego. Had an aunt that lived on Lake Oswego for many, many years. That's a great area. And that's just, that's a cool area. Waterfront living there. And that's just epic. Just epic. So Lake Oswego, upper end area. It's nice. Doesn't have the riffraff, right? I mean, yeah. Because you know what? Tents don't float. All right. That's all you got to know. Keen watchers of the local commercial office market said the company could be making a similar move to the burbs. Nate Sasaki, executive director of Apex Real Estate Partners, said Hoffman is headed towards Lake Oswego, likely in the Cruise Way Office Park Corridor. Oh, hey now. Okay. They don't want to be in downtown. They don't want to have that influence. I don't blame them. Tim Harrison, director of research at the real estate firm uh, Jones Lang LaSalle in Portland, said Hoffman's sites are broader than that. The word is they're looking at sites on Cruise Way and Lake Oswego, they're looking at Beaverton and maybe Hillsboro, said Harrison, anywhere but downtown Portland. <laughs> that, 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 that they had a huge stake in building that building, Fox Tower. They built it. So back in 2001. So it's not like they have no attachment to the community. It's just that you know, they're still there and their lease is up and they're like, okay, we out of here. Homegrown Portland companies are questioning whether they need to be located downtown and are weighing their options in the suburbs. News Hoffman would consider leaving the city came as a gut shot to longtime Portlanders. Really? I mean, really? Does it? Are you really that shocked? Are you really that surprised? Have you been to downtown Portland lately? I mean, come on now. Come on now. 
A civic stalwart and generous charitable donor, Hoffman was one of the increasingly rare large companies that had its headquarters and top executives here. This is a terrible thing for downtown Portland, said Bob Ames, a local real estate developer. Leave it up to a local real estate developer to actually spit some truth. This is a terrible thing for downtown Portland. Everybody else is like, well, they're, you know, they're, 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 they've got options. They're, they're thinking about things. And it's a terrible thing for downtown Portland. The real estate guy just comes right out and says, he's a developer. He doesn't give a rip. And he's like, ah, this is horrible. This is crappy. Uh, why is this happening? And one time bank president, this is a hundred year old company that had its genesis here. This sends all the wrong signals. I think that's all you need to know right right there. It's a hundred year old company that had its genesis here. We had a hundred good years in Portland. Well, we had 97 good years in Portland. And then at the end of that hundred year run, we really, really had to sit down and take inventory of what's important to us. And, you know, not having our employees, you know, um, impacted by the actions of those wildly addicted to drugs and or major, major mental problems roaming the streets, particularly around our headquarters. That made us really reimagine and rethink our position and what we want out of our corporate headquarters, and where that might be. They just verbally take you down this road of, uh-huh, uh-huh, I can barely stay awake. Uh-huh, uh-huh, oh. Oh, you're moving to Lake Oswego. Okay. It doesn't, this is not shocking, right? This is not shocking. 100 year old company that had its genesis here, that sends all the wrong signals. No, but are they wrong? They're signals that they are what they are. Uh, people don't want to be in downtown. Even companies that have everything invested there, like the last 100 years of history. That's something else. Hoffman has built many regional landmarks. Among its portfolio standouts are the Oregon Convention Center. That, that is not a small facility. No. With its twin green spires and Nike headquarters. They built Nike headquarters. This is a big, big company. Both the old Ivy League campus portion and the intergalactic starships that came later, right? I mean... They're innovative too, right? And building starships. The company took on the region's biggest, most high-profile jobs. Hoffman built Intel's huge expansion of the D1X semiconductor factory in Hillsboro. That's a pretty famous uh, location and setting. It was hired to handle the extensive renovation of, you got it, Seattle's Space Needle. And now, now they're moving out of downtown Portland because, yeah, that's not where you want to have your headquarters located. Hoffman also oversaw the 2001 construction of the Fox Tower, the building it will vacate. How bittersweet. Can you imagine being a project foreman, still there 20 years later, well, 20, uh, 22 years later. Like, man, we're moving out of here. This is weird. I remember building this in my whatever, 20s, and now I'm in my 40s, and we're leaving. And, oh, good luck with that space there, guys. The pending Hoffman move would not be the largest business loss Portland has suffered in recent years. Kinder Care Learning Centers, Liberty Mutual, and Unitas Community Credit Union all have vacated more space downtown or in the Lloyd District than Hoffman occupies. All right, so this... I'm sensing a theme. I see a theme emerging here. Now, this has been going on for years, right? You, you take a dump on an area in downtown and then you wonder, what's that smell? Why does, why does, it, why does it smell so bad? Why, why, oh, that's human feces on the side. Oh, that's because of the tents and the illegal activity and just all part and parcel with that whole deal. And then you've had, I mean, last year you had a barn burner of a year for murders in Portland, right? So you got criminal activity. You got, you got it all. And like the guy said earlier, this all sends the wrong, wrong signals. So this, this construction company leaving, they're in good company. Kinder care before them, Liberty Mutual, a community credit union. Oh yeah. We no longer need the space. We're downsizing. Getting the F out of Dodge, right? Harrison argues that downtown has bottomed out and is beginning to come back. All right. All right. I mean, 
I'm all for being aggressive with your attitude, with your positive mental attitude, your PMA. I'm, I'm for that. But is it really? Because the news stories that I'm reading here on News for Reasonable People, they don't really reflect much of a comeback. In fact, we're seeing kind of more and more of companies going, mm, yeah, this is, this is not working out. Or you've got individuals now that are starting to squawk saying, hey, I can't sell my house in these surrounding neighborhoods because we got so many homeless encampments. This is a no-go. Property values are way down. What am I supposed to do? You know, I need the city to clear these encampments out so I can sell my home. Even though a couple of years earlier, those same damn people requesting the city to clear out encampments were like, no, don't, don't clear out the encampments. Just let the unhoused live wherever they need to. We're compassionate towards our fellow human being. But now that it's impacting, I need to sell my, oh, my house isn't marketable. My house is worth how much now compared to just a few? Oh, yeah. Hey, city, you need to come in and clean this nonsense up. That's literally what you've got going on. More companies are issuing back to the office edicts, and the city is generally managing to keep the streets cleaner. Okay, so this is the bottoming out, beginning to come back. Yes, more companies are issuing back to the office edicts. That means you're going to have even more conflict because the more people you have in downtown, the more people you're going to have in downtown having conflicts with the drug dealers, with the people using drugs, with the people who are, you know, insane, criminally insane and doing all kinds of shenanigans. The, the dope dealers, the hondos, you're going to have people conflicting with that. But, um, you know, is the city generally managing to keep the streets cleaner? Maybe, maybe, I, you know, but it's kind of like the damage has been done. So the streets are a little cleaner. That is not enough for a company that's been in Portland for a hundred years to make them want to stay. Plus, you know, they're going to be able to put together better office space for, for what they need. So, yeah. You know, multiple aspects come into a decision like this. But bottom line is, is companies just don't want to be in downtown, downtown anywhere typically right now. But obviously there is a huge drug problem. He said, you have to make it safe. If it's not safe, no one is going to come downtown. Boom. That's all you need to know. That's, that's the explosion. That's a that's the big explosion. Man, we had an explosion over in a homeless encampment this morning. It's the, it's the one where the guy built the little tiny home and local officials said, don't get too comfortable here. We're going to clear this out. Meanwhile, six months later, it's still there. Yeah, we had a massive explosion. You could see it. <laughs> the plume of smoke was just insane. I mean, it happened while I was over on Lake Union last night. It was last night. Not this morning. This morning is when I saw the, uh, the the pictures. It happened on Mercer Street where they had uh, somebody killed a woman and wrapped her up in a tarp and left her at this encampment. But, you know, a little murder never hurt anybody because the encampment is still there. The tiny home that was built without any permits is still there. And you've still got people probably making meth or whatever, detonating bombs. Who knows what's going on there? Shenanigans and homeless encampments. You know, same thing that folks are wanting to move away from in downtown Portland. We've literally got exploding here in Seattle. It's so exciting. I mean, when you see just a bomb go up and you see your city skyline and you're like, all right, that, that looks like a uh, domestic terrorism event. But oh, no, never mind. It's just, you know, it's those mostly peaceful homeless people. It's kind of what we're doing, right? So you have to make it safe. If it's not safe, no one is going to come downtown. And that's a lot of what I talk about is you can convert all kinds of stuff to other uses to make yourself feel good, better about, all right, are we really optimizing the space in downtown? You can convert all day long, but the bottom line is, is you have to make it safe. If it's not safe, no one is going to come downtown, period. So how are you going to make it safe? What are you going to do? 
Where are you going to put all those drug dealers? Where are you going to put all those drug addicts? Where are you going to put all those people just mentally strung out that should be in mental institutions, but instead are medicating themselves in the street of Portland? What are you going to do with all those people? Where are you going to put them? Because like the dude says, no one's going to come downtown until you get that squared away. So how are you going to handle that? That's what we're kind of, you know, we're just glossing over. All right, big companies moving out. Yeah, you got to get it safe. All right, boots on the ground. How do you make that happen? I don't know. Nobody has a solution yet. It's going to require some real tough love if you're going to go down that road. Because until you get people some, some, some of the help that they need, those people are not in a position where they can say, you know what? I really need help today. I'm going to just check myself into rehab. Oregon is one of the worst states in the United States to get addiction services help or mental health care just don't have the facilities to do it. Just so undermanned, so underfunded that, yeah, expect this issue to keep going on long, long, long time because the the magic bullet is simply not there. Simply not there. Obviously, there's a huge drug problem when, you know, real estate developers like, yeah, we got a big drug problem. It's just so obvious, right? It's just so obvious. And how did you get there? Well, you allowed it to happen. And you voted in politicians that allowed it to happen. You voted in city council members that allowed it to happen. You voted in a mayor that was so progressive that, you know, it's just basically backtracking on everything. (laughs) You know, here's your sign, right? Okay. That's it for me on this one. Yet another company taken off. Oh, we're just gonna we're just gonna explore what the Burbs has to offer. Don't blame them because the stuff we're talking about that makes downtown dangerous, not as prevalent in the Burbs, right? Because a lot of Burbs they don't really tolerate that kind of nonsense. That's the difference. That's it for me on that one. Thanks so much for being here. I will catch up with you on the next one. Don't forget, we got merch. Socialism works for those. Socialism works for those who don't. That's good stuff. You know why? Because it's true. That's it for me. Thanks again for being here. We'll catch up on the next one. Bye for now.